back again for another Q&A. Thank you very much for sending in your questions. We love those questions. Keep them coming in. And thanks to my subscribe pillow. Subscribe pillow. Uh, please hit that button that looks a little, a little bit like this down there. We'd love your support to get our community to a thousand subscribers. And once we get to a thousand subscribers, this guy's going to go and we'll get something new. So let's get into today's question. So today's question is all around responsibilities. Uh, who is responsible for what in the NDIS therapist? Allied Health Professional and Vehicle Modifier Funding Process. So the case that we're talking about right now, or there's a case study around it. So what's happened is a therapist has a, an, an occupational therapist, and it could be any kind of um, therapist or, or allied health professional, has basically uh, done a trial with a product in a particular vehicle, and it worked for the occupant, right? And then. The occupant told the therapist that they've got a different vehicle and told the modifier they've got a different vehicle. The modifier did some checks on the new vehicle and said, yes, this will fit in that new vehicle, that's no problem. So they've, they've checked that and that's okay. The therapist has said, yeah, look, if you put it in that new vehicle, um, it's gonna work, so, so it's gonna be fine, right? So they go ahead, they get their funding, they, they go and get their new vehicle modified, and lo and behold, the guy doesn't fit in the vehicle. Right? So, so now the question is who was responsible for that and what's happening and, and why did we get to this point? Right? And, and there's been questions, is the vehicle modifier responsible? Is the therapist responsible? And what we've done is we've spoken with the Product Safety Commission and also NDIS and we've got some feedback from them and we've basically determined what is the responsibility for each party. And this is important to note because as this system grows, we're going to have more and more issues here. And this is, uh, to be honest, it's, it's, as the NDIS grows, you're going to have more cases and then more potential mistakes. And this is not the first time this has happened uh, and we've seen this happen, so we thought let's put a video around it. So, the long and short of it is that, as I said before, the, the job of the modifier is to make sure that the product will fit into the vehicle and also it can be compliant and it can also be registrable, right? Uh, and same with the supplier, someone like Mobility Engineering, like us. We, our job is to show that the product can be used on Australian roads, it's safe and it can be compliant. So that's basically where these guys fit in. The, the, what, the allied health professional who's making, conducting the assessment, uh, this can be a therapist, a physio, an OT or whatever, it's their responsibility to make sure that this product is going to work with, for them in all different types of applications. What their job is to do is to assess the space requirements. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell therapists what their job is to do. They'll probably know what it is themselves. But, you know, things like space, things like posture, things like function, all of those things sit with the allied health professional. And once they sign off on their, uh, their, their basically their prescription and their NDIS authorization, and they've signed off on that modification, the responsibility sits with them. And we've had now uh, probably a handful of cases where this has been mistaken and the therapist has been held liable for these modifications that were done incorrectly and uh, basically they've either had to fund it or their companies had to fund it or they've had to you know, fund any rework or anything like that. So that's where it gets a bit sticky and this is not very, very common. There's been, I think, 300,000 people helped with the NDIS and if we're only talking you know, less than a handful of mistakes, I think that's a pretty good shot and I think our therapist community does a wonderful job out there. So. I would say it's not really a major problem to worry about, but it's to clarify who's responsible for what. The therapists and the allied health professionals are responsible to make sure that the occupant, that the person is set up suitably with whatever vehicle they're talking about, even if it's a different one to the trial vehicle. We've spoken about different products or trial products. You've got to be very, very careful if you trial a different product, um, that you, the actual product is going to work because if it doesn't, you are responsible for that. So the therapist is responsible for making sure that this person is suitable for this product, this vehicle, this setup, and the modifier is suitable, making sure that this product will fit. So for example, if you've got the OK, and then the modifier turned around and said, oh, sorry about that, you went and bought this $100,000 car or $50,000 car, but I can't actually fit it, then that's the liability is with the modifier, and that's what they're quoting. All right, so hopefully that helps
helps clarify that. Uh, this might be a little bit of a sort of touchy-feely subject for some people, a bit of a controversial one, but, uh, but basically we'd love to hear your feedback if you do have some thoughts on that. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for sending your questions. Hit that subscribe button down there. We'd love to get you on board. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers, and we'll see you next time.